Great to see all of you again. I hope uh, you're having a good start to the week so far. Uh, we'll do a short Rashi on uh, Sunday and short Rashi on Monday's Aliyah. So short Rashi from uh, Rishon and from Shani of this new Parsha. Each one of these Parshios is so uh, jam-packed with uh, amazing stories and insights and Rashi. So it's very hard to choose. Uh, but I'll choose two of, uh, I guess you could call them my favorites. I know I had a lot of favorites in last week's Parsha as well, uh, but I'll share two uh, with you today. So in the beginning here of Vayetze, uh, just the famous one, which is always worth the repeating and uh, interesting one uh, to be able to mention. So as Yaakov leaves Beersheba, he's on his way to Haran. He has this famous dream. says Pasuk Yudbet. He has a dream of this ladder. And the ladder is firmly implanted on the ground, and the head of the ladder is up in the sky. The famous statement that the angels of Hashem are olim v'yordimbo. They're going up and going down. And everyone asks, how could it be that if they're angels, they're going up first and then coming down second? If they're angels, they should be coming down first from Shemayim, down from the heavens, and then going up, whatever that means in terms of the cycle of going up and going down. Uh, Rashi gives a very important but very basic interpretation over here, which is crucial to understand uh, both the Pasuk, but also the concept of what angels are all about in this story. And he says the reason why it's Olim Yordim is Olim Tchila V'acharkach Yordim, right over here, Olim Tchila V'acharkach Yordim. First they're going up and then they're coming down. Why? Because what the scene is talking about, what Yaakov's dream is all about, is Malachim Shelivuhu Ba'aretz Ein Yotzin Bechutza La'aretz. He says there's different sets of angels that govern the relationship with Yaakov in the land of Israel and outside the land of Israel. The malachim of the land of Israel were not allowed to be going out into Chutzvaret, into Gola, Galus, into diaspora where Yaakov was headed. And so as he comes to the edge of Eretz Israel, as he comes to his journey here out to go to Haran, so he has stops, he sleeps, he has a dream, and the malachim that accompanied him the whole way through Eretz Yisrael now have to leave. They have to go up. They're olim. And after they're olim, the malachim that are going to accompany him to Chutzaretz are yordim. Now this is consistent with the whole view that malachim have one purpose and one mission. So there's Eretz Yisrael uh, escorts and there's Chutzaretz escorts and they each have their own mission. They can't uh, interweave with each other, and that's fine. That's that's a kind of simple, basic understanding of what's going on here. Uh, but I think there's something deeper here, which is that there's a greater kedusha and there's a greater presence of a kaddish baruch Hu in Eretz Yisrael than there is in Chutz Laaretz. That's just a simple fact. It's not written in the Torah anywhere. It's not written explicitly in the Torah. Of course, it's written in Chazal. It's not written explicitly in the Torah, except perhaps the pasuk, which says that it's Eretz Asher Inei Hashem Lokech Alba. Tamid, there's always God's eye is on the land of Israel, but it's something that we intuit, it's something that we know, it's something that we collectively grasp. And I think uh, this Rashi is emblematic of that philosophy as well, uh, that there's greater Kedusha and presence, and therefore the angels, the level of the angels, the mission of the angels, the presence of the angels, as they're felt in Eretz Yisrael and Chutzlar, it could not possibly be the same. And so there has to be a changing of the guard. There has to be a transition moment. And that transition moment occurs right here at this moment in the Parsha when Yaakov is on his journey. So that's just an important Rashi to note uh, that I always love. I love the image of up and down, but I really love the image of Malachim and Eretz Yisrael stopping and the other ones taking over. I love that image of the changing of the guard and it inspires me with the sense of Kedushas Eretz Yisrael that is so palpable right here uh, in this story. Going a little bit further to the next Aliyah, oh, wrong direction, sorry, to the next Aliyah. Okay, beginning of today's Aliyah, Shani, a beautiful Pasuk and a great Rashi, which I really wanted to share with you. So the, the Pasuk says, as Yaakov is leaving, after his dream is over, it says, Vayisa Yaakov Raglav, Vayelach Arza B'nei Kedem. Vayisa Yaakov Raglav. Yaakov picked up his legs. That's Vayisa, is to lift. Vayisa Yaakov Raglav. He goes off and he walks towards, journeys towards this outside foreign land. The question is, what's Vayisa Yaakov Ragla? What's that expression? He lifts up his feet to walk, to go, Vayela. So we have Vayisa many times in the Torah, but it's never used in conjunction with Raglav. It's never used in conjunction 
with one's legs. You don't lift your legs. I mean, yes, when you walk, you lift your legs, but the Torah never describes a person as lifting their legs. The Torah describes Vaisa as Enav. He lifts his eyes. That's described many times in the Avos. Um, there's other references to Vaisa, but not, not coming to me in the moment, but not Vaisa as Ragla, never mentioned. And I, I looked it up the other day as I was reviewing these Rashis. It, to my knowledge, doesn't occur in any of these stories in Breshit or anywhere in the Torah, Vaisa Ragla, that, that, that the feet are lifted, or the Torah describes one's foot as being lifted in the process of walking. Rashi very beautifully notes that what it means here, Vaisa Yaakov Ragla, what it means is, Mishin Isbaser Besorah Tova, Behuftach Beshmira, after the whole incident of the dream, and the little deal that he makes with HaKadosh Baruch, and HaKadosh Baruch promises that he's going to be with him, and it's okay to leave, and he's going to be with him when he goes, he's going to be with him when he comes back, and everything's going to go okay. Nasa Libo Esraglav Venasa Kal Balechas. His heart, his spirit, his feeling, Nasa Esraglav, picked up his feet, and it became easier for him to walk. A gorgeous idea. I love this Rashi, not only because it explains Vayisa Raglav, but because it's so human and it's so real. What it's saying is that oftentimes, um, when our spirits are lifted, the difficult journeys of life become a little bit easier. When our spirits are lifted, when you're feeling inspired, when you're feeling a rush, so you get a little bit of jump in your step. You get a little bit of ease in your step. It's easier to walk. It's easier to move forward, both in the physical sense. It actually does become easier, and that has to do perhaps with the chemical makeup of our bodies and our brains and the interaction between the two. But in terms of emotion, it also becomes easier to move yourself forward, to not get stuck in the inertia, but to feel that when your heart is lifted, your feet lift right after you, and that journey becomes a little bit easier. And that's what's being described here by Yaakov. Very difficult journey to leave his parents' home, to leave the land that he loves, to leave the life that he knows, and to go off to some house that is antithetical to his values and some life that's different than the one he imagined because he's so hated and chased by his brother could not have been an easy task. But Vayisa Ragla, he picks up his feet and it's so easy to go. Not so easy because this was an easy experience, but so easy because with that encouragement and chizuk from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, his heart just lifted his legs and everything became a little bit easier. I hope that's an inspiring message to all of you as you begin your week and hopefully get a little jump in all of your steps as uh, we go forward into the difficulties of the day and of the week ahead. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day.